first kid wakes up, that's when we wake up. Most of the first part of the day is just getting them dressed, getting either breakfast or snack for either of them. So if we could ever sleep at eight, <laughs> you maybe running out. The mornings are mostly just getting ready, getting them out the door so we can start our day. Right, sorry, baby. Come on, buddy. Say bye to mommy. <laughs> Megan McCoon and Tom Shinoski live in a suburban neighborhood of Washington, D.C. They have a four-year-old son, John, who's in preschool, and a one-year-old named Lizzie, who goes to a local daycare. I work in operations and international development. I'm a program analyst and I'm a contractor for the U.S. government. After my son was born, a week later, the whole world shut down. So he was home for 13 months straight. You know, eight or nine months period, we just worked with having him home and tried to kind of switch off, prioritize meetings. We ultimately decided on a daycare that was in the neighborhood based on suggestions from friends. They're doing these amazing activities. John's last teacher was planning all these really stimulating experiences. That's just not something that we can feasibly do and also have full-time jobs. So it's expensive, but it's worth it. Daycare for toddlers in D.C. costs, on average, more than $24,000 a year, making it more expensive than New York City and San Francisco. Even at that price, the number of daycare spots in D.C. has fallen by 8% in just one year. Now, a new D.C. law could make those open spots for kids even harder to find. And that law requires daycare workers to get a university education, as if child care wasn't expensive enough. When D.C. first announced this new regulation eight years ago, it was spearheaded by a local education official named Elizabeth Kroginski. The logic was straightforward. If D.C.'s daycare staff had college degrees, they could do a better job helping disadvantaged kids climb out of poverty. The developmental opportunities and those early opportunities that they have really set the foundation for their potential success long term. The current D.C. City Council largely supports the regulation. One of its most vocal advocates, Council Member Christina Henderson, sees it as a way to professionalize the sector. To demand higher wages and for folks to not view it as just this pink collar work for which you can pay me minimum wage because it's only babysitting. Ami Bawa is one of the many daycare teachers who may have to leave their jobs because they don't have a college degree. She's a lead teacher and assistant director at a DC nursery school. Even though I have a lot of experiential learning, I don't meet what is now the current standard. Ten hand here. That means one friend is not here. Charlie! Charlie! Charlie. Where's Charlie? As a veteran teacher, Bawa was eligible to apply for a waiver but she's been waiting for five months for a response from the city. She hasn't gotten any communications about when her application will be considered. Raise your hand if you want to dance first. Let's say I guess for whatever reason, the waiver is not granted. What happens to you then? If I'm not granted the waiver, I have to make a big decision, which is whether I'm willing to leave this field that I love, that I've been in for so long, or if I'm willing to gain the credentials that I need to continue. Look, hedgehogs, look out the window. That's corn. And our bird feeders moving, what does that mean? That means they're corn. It's a little windy. You know, I think it's rare to have a job that you really love, that you get up in the morning and are excited about. So I think for me personally, I will do what I can to stay in this field. I, I'm not quite sure though what my options are at this time. All of these roadblocks make it harder. We're going to lose a lot of really good teachers. Wouldn't the person on the other side say, but this is leading to more respect for teachers. Teachers are now going to be educated. They're going to get the salaries that they deserve. How do you feel about someone telling you? Yeah, I think the best word for me would be disrespected. I feel like there's already not a high level of respect given to teachers. It makes us feel like we're interchangeable, like anybody could do this job. 
when that really is not the case. A profession like teaching specifically has to be one where you really care for and love what you're doing. What about grapes? What your education credential is doesn't equate to loving and being committed to the field. Many fear that the college requirement will increase tuition because it will make it harder for daycares to find qualified employees who have the necessary credential. But it's going to be the smaller daycares, the more affordable daycares that are going to suffer because they're not going to be able to attract yeah. talent or retain it. And they're not going to be able to put their prices to the level that they need to be to cover that talent yeah. because people like us aren't going to be able to yeah. pay it. So. No. so daycare closes at 530 and we're definitely there at or before 530 to pick her up. Costs are rising consistently across daycares in the area. It's happening every day, so we know many fellow parents whose their costs have gone up over 20 percent. Kind of a joke in the neighborhood that people space their kids three years apart because that's when free pre-K starts and they can <laughs> only have to have one in at a time because it's so pricey. So. After the rule was first proposed in 2016, there was fierce opposition from daycare workers who held protests outside the mayor's office. At the same time, the libertarian law firm, the Institute for Justice, sued the D.C. government to overturn the education requirements on the grounds that it interferes with the daycare worker's right to earn a living. The Institute for Justice has fought successful cases to overturn licensing requirements that make it harder for qualified workers to enter into certain professions, including hair braiding, private taxis, and cosmetology. However, in this case, the courts ruled in favor of the city on the grounds that the requirement is reasonable. The regulation finally went into effect in December 2023. What does the evidence say or not say when it comes to the efficacy of requiring all daycare workers to get just a college degree? The evidence for, um, for uh, either a two-year degree or a four-year degree is not strong in the sense of is a very blunt instrument. Dr. Robert Pianta is a professor of early childhood education at the University of Virginia. When we say degree, with all that variation under there, it's no surprise to anyone that the degree itself doesn't matter. There are more than 3,000 early childhood degree programs across the United States, and they vary significantly in terms of what they teach and focus on. Many daycare teachers who want to hold on to their jobs have enrolled part-time at schools like Trinity Washington University, a small Catholic college in Northeast D.C. In order to earn the required degree here to be an assistant teacher in a D.C. daycare, you can take early American history, go on field trips to learn about plate tectonics, develop an appreciation for music from diverse cultures, and study comparative world religions. People like Councilmember Henderson defend the idea that daycare workers should study subjects that have nothing to do with childhood education. Oh, yeah, I gotta take Shakespeare. What does that teach you? It's also about critical thinking and learning, something also that you are passing on to young children as well. Let's just back up a little and remember that these are babies. Absolutely, it would be so amazing to have all, all this extra stimuli. I would also question like how much somebody with a bachelor's degree, how much more they're really adding to the equation than basic tactile experiences, than basic craft experiences. I think the needs of children at that stage, they're pretty primal. This will cause damage to childcare facilities in D.C., especially areas in D.C. that are impoverished. Nicole Page is the director of the CCPC Nursery School. Our tuition and wages will be impacted if we're required to employ people with a degree standard. It does not only take education, it takes experience. And that's what we will lose if we are not able to retain our staff, is the wealth of knowledge that they have by the hands-on experience. One of the teachers at CCPC has a PhD in Family and Children's Studies and works as a professor at a local university. But, according to the new regulation, because her degree isn't in early childhood education, she's not considered qualified to teach at a daycare in D.C. It is truly insulting when you have someone who's an adjunct professor who's teaching a policy and advocacy course for early childhood education who is deemed ineligible 
to teach in a preschool setting. Pizza's here. Yay. Hey, buddy. Thank you, Daddy. Did the card work? Yes. Okay. John. Oh, take here. You could give me all the green stuff. Daddy? No, no, that's not my ah, pizza. This one's yours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. As parents and as citizens of DC, it seems like the local government should be prioritizing the needs of the kids and also of the care providers who are making their livelihood every day by taking care of kids uh, the same way they've been doing it for many years um, and may or may not have the resources to stop everything and secure some degree program. I just think in, in DC, there's a lot of bureaucracy in a lot of cases. And I think this is like just kind of another case of where bureaucracy is gonna make our lives worse. Yeah, Lizzie. Lizzie.